Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So this is the final entry in the Dev Diary series, A Contest Evolved. And we're going to go over this document. You'll also find this information on the forums. But I wanted to give you my thoughts on uh, what they're planning. Now, first off, I want to set your expectations. And this first section here also mentions that they are talking about the future. So don't expect hard dates or anything like that. This is more uh, Kabam being transparent and inviting us into the development process. Uh, if you're familiar with the development process, you know that there's a, a phase where nothing is done other than brainstorming ideas, fleshing things out and creating a design, an outline. And then you will fill that in and you may even go back to the design phase if you find that some of the uh, details or the implementations that you were planning aren't viable or not in keeping with what your vision was. So what we're looking at here is going to be a mix. You're going to see their future vision, but they also have some goodies that are going to happen in the immediate future. OK, so we're going to go over both of those things. So first, we have a couple of uh, or a few quality of life improvements. OK, and if you don't know what quality of life means, they give it to you right here. Usually small things that make your experience in a game more enjoyable or fix pain points that aren't fundamental to gameplay or a specific mode. OK, so. Sell from stash. Yes, that is so annoying. In fact, uh, I've told people that when I got the sigil, I didn't get it to help my progression. At my point in the game, it doesn't do anything like that for me. What I got it for was the inventory. That was a quality of life change. And one of the things that it did is it increased my capacity so that when I did sell things, I didn't have to go back as often, but that will eliminate the need for that. I'll probably still get the sigil, but that goes a long way in fixing that particular uh, pain. Uh, champion tag filtering. Yes. Why wasn't this here already? Uh, when I first started playing the contest, I wondered why I wasn't able to filter on tags. Why can't, you know, with all the nodes and things that they had in the game, why couldn't I, you know, for example, you know, we have an X-Men event going on right now for the Alliance. Why couldn't I filter and say, all right, show me all the X-Men. Instead, we had to rely on third party utilities and websites. So this is actually really, really nice. Uh, we do have the capability from uh, especially the Aunt May website, one of the newest websites, and uh, I'll still use that website, of course, but this was one of the things that it did that we wished Kabam would implement. Well, now they are. All right. Uh, dual targets. These are already in. You can search for a champion with their proper name, and you'll find, I believe, a six-star version of them to duel so you don't have to worry about trying to find uh someone that has this as their top champion search for wolverine search for scarlet witch squirrel girl all of that and you'll get a dual target so that's a really really nice uh addition and that's there now uh dual target fight again oh man the replay uh i don't know if you guys remember the dual event but we cried for something like this in the dual event. You know, we would have just been able to, you know, hit a button, fight, hit a button, fight, instead of having to go through several screens to get back to the fight. It was ridiculous. So this is nice. Uh, it'll also help me out, you know, if I decide to make a video where I'm, you know, dueling some champion and I go in and the first time I try it, I get wrecked. Well, I can just hit a button, try it again, keep going until I get a good uh, match. 
that I want to showcase, you know, this particular champion's abilities. So I'm very looking forward to that. All right. Now this new section, new gameplay. Okay. Now this one, they are exploring it, you know, or as they say, in active development. So that means you don't expect it right away. You know, those quality of life changes, you can expect, you know, one of them at least is already in and you can expect the other ones pretty soon. Okay. Mechanical prototypes. This is a new gameplay. When I first read that route, I was not happy. Uh, I am not a fan of anything that takes my control from me. Just not a fan of it. And rooting me in place, I was ready to rage. However, you'll notice that you can still attack, block, parry, and dex. So we'll have to see how it is implemented. You know, I'm not... I'm I'm on the fence about this one because I don't know what it's going to look like. Okay, it could add something uh, to the game that's a lot of fun, uh, but it could also make my life miserable when it comes to fighting a champion that has that ability. We'll see. Uh, and then you have volume trigger. Now that looks interesting, more of an area of effect uh, type of a trigger. Okay, large attacks, uh, um, defensive tools, triggers that affect a large area of the battlefield. Um, and they said, imagine traps being laid, healing pads, spiked walls. This, that can be very interesting. Uh, can you imagine fighting and you're hurt? And there's a healing node on the battlefield itself. So you fight aggressively and push your enemy back so that you can hit that and get a heal. It, it, it's, it sounds interesting, okay? That definitely sounds interesting, okay? And they said on top of these two, we're exploring a couple of bolder game uh, play options, one of which you can check out in all its madness below, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute, okay? Now, the root and volume triggers, they're saying that they hope, remember, they hope, that they can bring this this year. No promises, but they're working on this. So this is something uh, that they are working on getting into the contest soon. Fight replays, that is gonna be really nice. Now, I remember when I first started playing, there was something that was happening and I wasn't sure if it was the game or whether it was something else. I was on my Galaxy and what was happening is at particular times in the game, screenshots were being taken. And, you know, I'd be fighting and then suddenly I would, uh, you know, get some hit and boom. And my phone wasn't the fastest. And so when it did a screenshot, it actually lagged it a little bit. And I'm like, what's going on? Why is it doing this? Is this the game or is it my phone? I wasn't sure. Um, but it actually had one nice feature that, you know, you can't always anticipate when you're going to have a great photo op, you know? So with these fight replays, you know, that's going to help out. If you watch my channel uh, and you watched any of my Alliance War videos, that's going to add quite a bit because that means everyone will be able to give me a fight replay. They don't have to worry, you know, maybe they did this fight, they forgot to record, or they did the fight, um, and just didn't feel like recording. Well, with a fight replay, they can do a replay, give it to me, and I can include it in the video. So I am very much uh, looking forward to that, okay? Let's see here. Um, yeah, in-game replays, plays of the week, uh, or just sharing your proudest moments with your friends. Sharing those moments so that they can add it to their videos. All right. Um, see here, uh, boosting the potential of their raid boss design. I still want to see what that's going to look like. It, it could be very exciting, um, depending on how they do that. Uh, and they're saying it's still in internal development. Uh, while at a later stage, we'll still be exploring the best way to deliver them to the contest. So don't expect anything more of on them this year. Okay. Um, 
<clears throat> now, this looks very interesting, okay? Strikers. When I read this, I was like, wait, what? What? What are you doing? Okay, so check this out. It's gonna be pretty much a tag team feature. There are uh, video games. I'm trying to remember the game. Was it Street Fighter, uh, Marvel versus Capcom, I think, or something like that. Um, and there's other games where you can tag team. So you're fighting and then you can tag in another character on your roster to fight for you. And there are several games uh, that do that. So this is exciting. It's not a new concept but it'll be new to the contest. And I am looking forward to that. That opens up a lot of flexibility, okay? There will be fights that, you know, they may have this unblockable special. So you can tag in Spider-Gwen, for example, or maybe Red Guardian and deal with that. And then for most of the fight, especially if it's a long fight, you can use someone else that does high damage. So, you know, you just go, 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 go until you have them to a special that you can't evade, tag out. This is just me imagining the possibilities. I don't know how it's gonna be implemented exactly, but that gets me excited. That That's awesome right there, okay? It's in early development, they said, uh, which means prototyping and the exploration of its potential, okay? The possibilities of strikers are vast. Yes, they are. And we're still exploring uh, exploring where to take them. This looks crazy. They could do so much with this, okay? Um, let's see here. They said that you could possibly equip a striker artifact on your champion to gain the ability to tag in your teammate or maybe borrow one of their special attacks. Are y'all hearing this? Can you imagine fighting with one champion and borrowing the special attack of another. Let's say Havoc, borrowing his special three and you're fighting with a champion that, oh, oh, I don't know, like Hyperion or someone that has a strong power gain. Hey, Vision Arcus, build all the way up, you know? And there's other champions that are quick to gain a special three. That can be insane. I can't wait, all right? But they're just promising you that it is under construction, okay? Um, let's see, there's some technical as well as design problems to be solved, okay. Strikers could be formidable allies, but what if they could also be used to create more challenging adversaries? Now, you're thinking of it offensively, but you may have to fight. You're fighting someone and then it swaps in and swaps someone else. And you got to deal with two. That can be exciting and, and far more challenging. I am excited. I am excited uh, to see what they do with this. You know, nothing concrete right now, but just knowing that this is something that they're working on, it's crazy. Love it. All right, let's see. Um, what we do know for sure is that we intend for there to be a system to control how and when you, you, you can use strikers. Okay, so they're still working on it. Um, and they even say this in the final one, don't expect strikers anytime soon. We've completed two full prototypes. They're working on it. Uh, and they're now exploring the surrounding systems. All right, so awesome. Now, incursions, which are already in the game, uh, it looks like they're gonna be changing a few things. Now, this is going to be within the next 90 days. So three months time, they're going to remove the link from the first fight, which will encourage more flexibility and swapping. Uh, there were times where we got a mini that we needed to swap in a champion for. We didn't have any champion to deal with it, but we didn't get past the first node. It was well, you know, we were in, I forget, um, zone maybe uh, nine or something like that. And that link, since we couldn't sabotage it, we weren't able to get past it. So that's a welcome change. You know, I, I am looking forward to seeing that one. Uh, the Incursion Store update doesn't impress me all that much, um, but 
it's there for people who might want to push. Uh, but I'm, I won't say I'm completely dedicated to not buying anything from that store, but I'm very unlikely to buy anything from that store. Now, in the next six months, you we're going to get new hacks, hack tiers, and rebalancing. Okay, we love those hacks, right? And they're talking about um, adding things like resisted damage is reflected onto the opponent as direct damage. Armor rating translates to an attack boost. While a champion has an active armor up effect, the opponent is armor broken, taunted, and vulnerable. While the champion has more than five active armor up effects, their attacks are unblockable. If the champion has no active buffs, gain a power gain buff, granting one bar of power over a number of seconds. And if one of your buffs would be nullified, inflict a stun lasting some seconds on the opponent instead. So those are just some ideas. That's not an exhaustive list of all the hacks that they're going to be implementing. Just giving you a tidbit, a taste, okay? Now these hack tiers, are quite interesting. Uh, they're going to break up hacks into these tiers. So tier three, that's what we're at right now. This is what we are used to. Tier two, they're gonna be more powerful, but you're gonna have less options in choosing which ones. Uh, I don't know how that's gonna be implemented. You might you know, get a random uh, selection. And then tier one is most powerful, but the least options when choosing. Okay, so maybe tier two you know has some sort of a random element where you can hit a random and tier one you know it does the random for you and all you have is like one option you know i don't know how they're going to do it but that should be interesting um then uh hack rebalance uh the existing hacks are pretty cool but yeah they do have some that are much stronger uh and more generically useful absolutely um, but they did promise, we'll see if they keep that promise, uh, that they're not rolling out the nerf bat on them, but they want to bring back more niche uh, hacks uh, into the stratosphere, as they say, uh, so that players can more easily make the decision to swap the champions uh, that can benefit them, swap to the champions that are more beneficial. All right, now, within 12 months, you've got a bunch of features and quality of life uh, things coming. Uh, I'm not going to go into every single one of these. I want to have, you know, you guys go ahead and read this if you want to ask me questions, but I don't know any more than what you're seeing here. Okay. So you've got firewalls, themed boss fights, every five zones, matchmaking zone targets, champion refresh timer. This is nice. Any active champion cooldowns in incursions, will automatically refresh at the end of each five day event. That is huge, all right? Uh, no zone, no cooldown, that's very useful for the times where people join and then just quick uh, quit, all right? Um, but yeah, definitely read all of this. I'm looking forward under firewalls, I'm looking forward to some of this stuff because uh, they're gonna be doing more with the friendship levels. Uh, and that's gonna be very, very interesting. Okay, um, uh, let me see. Yeah, uh, now one thing I do want to mention about the firewalls. I said I wasn't going to go into them in detail, but this is very important. You're going to be able to pick off where you left off, uh, pick up where you left off. That's huge. You know, right now, me and my friend Itens, we always do uh, these incursions together. And we would like to push sometimes but we have to go through all the zones that we went through before and then finally get to the one that we wanna to push to. What this is saying is that we will be able to just pick up at the zone where we ended. That's huge. All right, I just wanted to make out of all of these, that one right there to me is my favorite. All right, now here we go. We got more features, uh, friendship bo uh, benefits. Yeah, friends with benefits. Um, and you can see here some of these squad synergies, uh, squad heal, revive, energy buffs. I can't wait. Uh, event abilities. Uh, the basic idea around event abilities is to give players incursion specific 
progression within each 30 day event. We'll see what that looks like. Okay. Um, and then we've got is complicated. They're going to implement leaderboards. People love leaderboards. They love the recognition. Let's see if they do it well, but that's why they're not doing it immediately. Now, here is my section. I'm sure you guys already know how much of a big arena grinder I am. So you know I zoomed in on this section, right? So unlike the others, we're going to go into this one, all right? And they, they know it. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some people don't have the time. Oh, yeah. All right? It's grind mode. Love it. Um, I know I sound crazy, but that's okay. Uh, our shorter-term goals are to make improvements to some of the unnecessary stresses and menu interactions. In the longer term, we're looking into new ways for players to interact with the arena's reward system. Okay, so within the next 90 days, I can't wait, consistent AI. If you watch me on live stream, you know how I will rage sometimes when the AI refuses to throw a special. It is so annoying. And what they're saying here is that they're going to start throwing their specials. Look at that final sentence. Most importantly, they're going to throw those specials. So instead of getting the passive AI that refuses to throw, throw specials, we're going to get a more consistent AI. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Building up the infinite streak with that passive AI is the worst part of the arena. This should take care of it. Okay. Now look at this improved featured arena rank rewards. They're going to be expanding from 150 to 300. So the top 300 champions are going to, or the 300 summoners are going to get the champion, not 150. Now I have a, I'm curious about something on the leaderboards. What I usually do in my videos, and I need to ask them this, uh, we get to see the top 200, but only the 150. So we get to see people that got close. And so, you know, I have that little uh, segment where I sympathize with those who missed but came close. How many are we going to see on this leaderboard? Are we going to see the top 400? That's a lot. Okay. Um, so that might be if we still see only the top 200, it might be the end of that little segment there. But that is a welcome welcome change that's going to open up a lot it's going to lower cutoffs and i may start going for more champions okay 150 to 300 is huge all right uh we're going to be increasing the rewards for near misses so that's also very interesting uh i don't know how many of you remember back in the day but there used to be um milestones so if you missed the champion you still got another champion it was tiered so i don't know how they're going to do it um you know miss one champion get another one or miss that champion but you get you know some really good rewards anyway uh three star feature champion now this looks interesting um i don't know how that's going to work but he says they'll be offering three star versions of their feature champion in the arena milestones of three star arenas and above so that might make the three stars easier to acquire instead of us having to, you know, uh, use my arena boost, which is what I do and grind out to uh, like maybe 1.5 million. It looks like we're going to be able to get the three stars far easier. So that's also a welcome change because I like uh, acquiring champions. All right. Now, here's some other stuff within 12 months. Auto request help. Oh, yes, yes, please. All right. Um, they're adding a toggle to automatically request help anytime champions are used in the arena. This by far blows away most everything else. That's how annoying the help system is to me. Because in the arena, and you'll notice that this is all within the arena, that is a huge improvement because it gets in the way. You know, I have to sit there each time after I do a round and request help just to get them out of the way because if I don't, it will slow me down considerably. 
So that is huge. Okay. Love that. I want them to implement that now, but okay. At least I know it's on the radar. They're going to be doing it. Uh, improved boosts, uh, UI, uh, that's user interface. Uh, applying arena boost to your champions is a hassle. We're going to make some quality of life changes to streamline this experience. Um, exact details are in the works, but whatever solution we go with, we want players to retain control. All right. Cached filtering. Yes. That means that you're going to be able to save your filtering between the arena matches and it'll only reset when you close the game. I love that. Okay. That's going to help so much and speed things up auto select champions button now this i know a lot of people are gonna love this okay and i don't know whether i'll use it or not but to go along with cash filtering we're going to add an easy access button to just select the next uh three champion in your filtered list uh for your next matchup so depending on how they do the filters uh if you watch one of the things that I do is I usually go in with specific teams. That's how I do arena. I go in with the same teams every time I add new champions to my roster. I redo the teams a little bit, but for the most part, I go in with the same teams. I don't just choose the top three, but some people do. And that is faster, but going in with the same teams, I find just a little bit more enjoyable. So I don't know how useful that's going to be to me, but that is a huge change. Um, maybe I'll use that for some of the other arenas outside of the featured five-star arena, but we'll see. Uh, mitigate massive PI differentials. That's those death matches that can get people wrecked. They're going to be addressing that. So that's uh, pretty good. Now, they're going to have a new arena alternative. What that is? Don't know yet. Um, they just have goals right now that they want to have some alternate way of accumulating those rewards and resources than Arena. Right now, Arena is the way to gain resources in this game. If you don't want to spend a lot of money, you need to spend a lot of time in that Arena. That's what I do. Okay? So that's going to be huge. Whatever it is. Uh, social progression, uh, and you guys can read that here. Uh, I don't know. They're giving you general ideas of what they uh, want to do here. Um, not too much information in there. All right. You got new nodes. Okay. This is going to be interesting as well, depending on what they do. Okay. You can see here, this uh, section is earmarked uh, for two big mode explorations. All right, uh, let's see here. Uh, Raid Boss started out as its own concept, but we have quickly evolved it into the next step uh, in the future of Alliance Quest. We hope the tease from the Alliance post got you excited for more for the future. So we may be facing some more Raid Boss stuff in Alliance Quest, however they're going to implement that. Uh, so that's going to be a change to Alliance Questing. Interesting. A solo competitive mode. I want to see how that works. I, that's, I, it, it sounds interesting, but I want to see how that works. Okay, they don't have one right now. Okay, so it's in the very early stages of conception. Okay, so they are not working on it right now. They're just thinking about it, brainstorming. All right, prove your skill, uh, a new meta, real progression, uh, less kabam, more summoners. All right, so... Um, these are just their basic goals for this solo competitive mode. So no details, but this is just what they want to accomplish with this. Okay. Um, and they do make a note. This is not synchronous PVP. So that means you're not going to get real time PVP. That's what they mean by synchronous real time. No, not going to be that. Okay. Um, that just does not work for this uh, particular game. All right. And then they go on and they talk about their commitment in the end. Okay. But that's going to do it for this final part, part four of the dev diary. Hopefully you found this informative and you got excited, but you may want to just relax and wait. 
I'm excited about the things that I see they're going to implement very soon. You know, the changes to uh, the arena, especially, you know, the help system, especially. Um, but they have several things that are coming soon that got me excited. All right. The rest of it is more in the future. We may not see it this year. We may see it next year sometime. But this is what we have right now. OK, so tentatively excited. And I think that Kabam is going in the right direction. OK, so that's going to do it. Thank you all for watching. Click like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video and what you think about all of this. Is Kabam on the right track? Did you find anything in here that got you excited? So take care and you all have a blessed day.